Hello, friends. This is Kristen Fagan here with Softlex Company, and we are kicking off our Customer Appreciation Week for 2022. I was trying to add extra twos in there. <laughs> <laughs> It feels uh, like here. more than just one year, right? Right? Yeah. So this is our second annual. That must be the other two I was trying to get in there. This is our second annual uh, Customer Appreciation Week. And we have presentations planned three times a day, all week long. You can watch them live on Softlex Company's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And the replay replays will be available anytime after we go live. So you can always come back and watch them again and again, which is perfect because we are gonna have tutorials on every single video this week. And so you can watch along, you can make along, and then you can come back and watch again later. Let's see who's joining us here. Oh, we've got some friends, Lynn and Marisol, Terry, Janelda. Happy to see you all. Um, one little second here. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what Customer Appreciation Week is. So here at Softlex Company, we created Customer Appreciation Week. Um, it started last year. This is our second one. And it's a week-long virtual jewelry making event that takes place live on Softlex Company's Facebook page and YouTube channel. We are teaming up with bead stores across the country to bring you unique classes each day. And we curated this event as a way to say thank you to you, our amazing customers, the beading community, as well as our loyal bead store customers. There will be free jewelry making classes all week long. You just buy the make along kits directly from each presenter um, as you'd like. And you can find a link to all of the kits over at softlexcompany.com. Just click on customer appreciation week in the navigation bar and you'll have all of the links to each um, kit there for to click through and check out from each presenter. Um, you'll be able to watch all the replay, the videos anytime after. So let's go ahead and say hello to our first guest presenter. This is going to be uh, Cassandra Spicer joining us from Beads to Live By. And she has a Lily Wreath bracelet that we are going to be doing today. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> oh my I'm goodness. Not gonna lie. It was like moments into you talking and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the first person. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, what did I sign up for? <laughs> <the pressure. laughs> I have pressure too. I was like, oh, I have to set this video up. I don't think I've ever had quite an intro like that before when I've oh. gone live. Well, it looks really good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for being here and thanks for being our first one to kick it off. We're so excited to share uh, a little bit more about Cassandra and her bead shop, Beads to Live By, and work on this gorgeous uh, tutorial that she put together for all of us. So, Cassandra, why don't you tell us a little bit about your shop and what you're going to be doing today? Ooh, well, we started off as a brick and mortar store in our downtown, um, the downtown area of our city in Jackson, Michigan. So, you know, everybody jokes around about the the mitten. If you're looking at Michigan, we're like down in this area. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, kind of somewhere in the vicinity of 2020, we uh decided that we should maybe list more than just bead patterns on our website and started adding um, other products. And that all has just spiraled into this awesome situation where we've gotten to know friends like you guys and um, other great people that are involved in this week's event who we get to do videos and just hang out and goof around with. So um, it's amazing <laughs> that, um, so up until 2020, that's what I'm hearing, you were mostly just brick and mortar and you had a few patterns online. And then right around then is when you started um, really moving into the online space as well. And I do think that was also precipitated a little bit by, um, I had gotten to know some friends really well in the like retreat and travel side of the bead world. So 
I had spent a couple of years leading up to that. Thank goodness I got it out of my system before everything kind of shut down. But um, I'm involved in the bead cruise with um, Becky Haley's the host of that now. And then um, I got to travel to the Czech Republic and kind of see the ins and outs of the Czech glass um, industry and do some shopping there. So um, those things, I think, also started to like push us a little bit towards, you know, expanding outside of our four walls. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, like if, if nothing else had already kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah, out of the nest. So shoved, deep, shoved us. Well, it sounds... It sounds like, um, yeah, you really set some step stones to be ready for that. And like you said, you got to travel and to go to the Czech Republic. That is amazing to go see how the beads are made. Ah, what a dream trip. I highly recommend it. And if it wasn't cool enough to go see the beads, like I was just excited about viewing the beads in person, but um, the closest city to that area of the world is Prague like the closest large city, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. And that is like, I mean, I've, I've traveled to other parts of Europe and um, all over the world actually. And Prague is one of my favorite places I've ever visited. It's such like a well-rounded, there's so many things to see. It's got great art, of course, and architecture and the food and wine are amazing. You know, like it's just got, you know, all those fun things all wrapped up into one place. So Very cool. a great trip. And the bead cruise has been going on for quite a while now. That's a really fun thing. Is it a week long? How long is that? They they do always make sure it's a week long cruise. So I think Heather Powers, who um, started it, did that over 15 years ago. I think this last year was the 16th year they've done it. I know. I can't even imagine. I've only gone this coming year will be my fourth year, I think. So um, still a newbie a little bit, but excited to get back to traveling, I'm sure, and seeing yeah. some beating friends again. Um, so for those of you that are new to Cassandra at Beads to Live By, you can find her and her shop over at beads to live by.com. And she does do um, a lot of things online as well, right? Do you have any regular schedule, like online programming? So because I do so much work with our other friends, I don't really have like one day a week that we do it, but we do a video almost every week. And it's usually in like the evening, sometime between six and 8 PM, but we always post about it ahead of time and give people like a good heads up on when that's going to be. Awesome. Well, we get to, we get to bead and uh, bead along with Cassandra quite a bit here at Softlex company. We've had her on for beading parties um, pretty regularly and they're always a lot of fun. So you can check any past ones over on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. We have a beating party playlist. Um, and speaking of, we have a customer appreciation playlist. So you can see everything that happens today right there in the playlist. I'll be adding the streams as we load them up. I know today's are all already linked um, to that playlist. And so you can take a look at that at any time and see all of the video replays. Uh, Brenda is asking, Kristen, is that one of your paintings on Cassandra's wall? <gasps> no, it is not because Cassandra is also a painter. <laughs> I believe that is one Actually, of hers. That is a piece, which is funny. It does. Every time we get on the camera together, I'm like, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting to mention that my friend Cheryl Ambergy has a gallery and a business here in our community. And that is one of her pieces. And it was like a pandemic related. She did like dozens of hearts on that size canvas and then gave them away to people at like an opening or something. Yeah, it was such I a special event. I love that. Such oh. a special event, so. That's really cool. Spreading the love during a time when we all needed a little extra. It's really, really pretty. Um, but Cassandra does also paint, I believe. <laughs> I, I dabble in other art forms very loosely. <laughs> I call it very plain. <laughs> yes. Well, I love that. You know, creativity just kind of spreads out all over the place. So if you're, uh, you know, a beater, you usually tend to do a lots of other creative crafts too. And if this is your first 
foreplay into um, creativity. A beading is a good stepping stone to then try lots of different things because you can include painting, you can include knitting, you can include crochet and lots of other stuff, weaving all into your jewelry designs as well. Um, speaking of, real quickly, let's just talk a bit about um, your curated collections, right? Yeah. So I have my little earrings we made um, the last time we got together. Uh, Cassandra has these curated collections she started doing. She's got one for seed beads, which is what this is from. These are half of the colors. You get, um, I think, eight colors eight, yeah. total. And I got four and Sarah got four. And we we worked on this together during the beading party. And then I also did a full tutorial for it uh, the week after. And there's a button subscription too. So if you wanna just briefly tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. Yeah, so I'm so glad you had those earrings out because I've got a few samples here of different things, but those obviously exemplify some of the best things you can do with the seed beads and the soft flex. So um, this summer, you know, I had a little extra time. Things were a little quieter at the shop and I started brainstorming with um, some friends about like things we could do to just, you know, add something new to our business. So we decided to do a subscription or like, you know, offer several subscription options. And the first two that we've been able to curate, which that also, you know, Kind of led into the idea of the name because I didn't want it to be just another subscription. Um, I can't do random very well. So <laughs> if it was just like me throwing a bunch of beads into a box, it would be a disaster. And, and I don't, <laughs> it's, it's not physically possible for me. So um, the idea of them coordinating and working together so that you can use them in a project or several projects was, um, oh, Danielle, I'm so excited that you're excited. When when Danielle's order came through, I kind of fangirl, like, fainted a little. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited that she's, uh, uh, you know, checking out our subscriptions. So thank you for that, Danielle. But, um, yeah, so the, the seed beads, you get 10 grams of each of the colors, about 10 grams in a bag. And yes, Teresa, I saw your order come through. I'm super excited for you too. And we are doing listings on the website. So like the bags are not individually marked, but then the um, listing will show people like exactly what color description number and the, um, the brand of the seed bead moving forward. That was a really mm -hmm. good suggestion we had from one of our influencers. So you get eight different colors of seed beads. The 10 grams, for anyone that's familiar with tube sizes, it's like the kind of the medium-sized tube is about the quantity there. And from my experience, at least, unless you're doing a massive project, that quantity is like kind of the sweet spot where you get just enough that if you are using more of something, you can like get away with, you know, still using the, the color in your, your subscription. But if you don't need a lot, you can spread them out over multiple projects as well. And then the buttons are like a variety of, they, they are more random, but those are a little bit more of like, the point of that subscription is like, you're getting a really good deal. You're getting at times almost $30 retail value worth of vintage buttons for like $18.99 or less because you get a wow. discount when you register for more than one month at a time, so. Yeah, so you can really get that discount even lower if you're gonna go ahead and do the three, I think it was a three and a six month were your other options? Yep, where the 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 discount is tiered at like five or 10%. The more you, the more you sign up for the beginning, the more you save. Wonderful, oh, we love it. Well, thanks for sharing what you've got going on. Those are fairly new from Cassandra and we did a quick little rundown of them uh, last month. And I think we're gonna do a couple more in the future too, where we can share what she's putting out there. Um, so now let's get going with what she has to share with us today. I'm gonna take away my, um, my stream and just kind of change our setup a little bit. There we go. Uh, so we can see what we're gonna be working on with Cassandra today. So these bracelets, when when you guys invited us to participate this week, I was so excited. 
And it's also like that instant design, like um, panic of like, what am I going to make? <laughs> because it's not only, you know, something I'm going to share on the video, but then also, you know, needed to get kits together and wanted to offer multiple colors. Cause I mean, I'm sure you understand this, Kristen. It's just a little boring to put one color scheme of any project together. <laughs> yeah, once to. you make one, you're like, ooh, we have to do this in another one and another one. And so you've got three different colorways, is that correct? And I, I think do. you have um, a little of each still left if you guys wanna grab a kit, but the silver one she's holding, I think you said was the um, closest to being totally so, out. Yeah. So this yeah. is the blue bonnet. And I want to say maybe I had a half a dozen or so left at this point. That's that's the, the least plentiful one. And I love this one. Super sweet. This I color. know. This is, this is the dandelion because it's got just that little punch of yellow in the lily bead. And those lily beads, it's funny. I don't, they, they weren't something I was going to include originally. That wasn't like the design inspiration. I was more excited about using these metal tubes, but um, the lilies really added something to it. And of course, they stole the, the show a little bit, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they needed to be a part of it clearly, but those, the pips too, it's like, I really love the look of having like more than one size dangle. It kind of gives it some nice texture. So. Oh, I think I just noticed that the lily actually um, glides over the tube, whereas the pip and the other beads stay stationary, correct? It does. And mm -hmm. there's a space along the tube where one of the pieces of wire goes over the outside of the tube. And then it's oh, caught, there you go. caught between other beads in between in the sections that are stationary. So you actually have like multiple beads that are, are adding movement in there. Very cool. I love that you paired this with copper, it looks like, right? Yeah, this one is the, the antique copper colors. Yeah, it really kind of softens and gives it a more, um, I feel like it makes it a little more fall with that copper and the yellow and the and the pink. Yeah, I think this, this color scheme is really versatile. I think there's enough bright colors in it that people could wear it in the spring or summer, but um, it's not as it's not as dark as the chrysanthemum color scheme. And yeah, I still think that, you know, it definitely could transition into fall nicely, so. So the chrysanthemum, let's take a look at that one. That was the last colorway. And that looks like it's got some really pretty greens in there. So fun story, that was the last color um, palette I picked out and I literally Googled most popular colors because I was really kind of having a bit of a design block, like what should I do for this? Because I know I'm not a big silver person normally, but I know a lot of people love the silver finish on their mm -hmm. metals. So I had already made sure and got that out of the way. <laughs> but green is one of the most popular colors. So <gasps> I want to make sense. sure. I love green. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I mean, I'm like more of a turquoise green person. So I did try to include, there's like a bit of like a forest green in that pip. And then the fire polish is like kind of a matte version of that. And the um, extra fancy Austrian crystals that are on here are all, you know, the beads that we no longer can utilize as much. So. Yeah, I figured, you know, why not? It was a great place thing. to put them. Yeah, perfect. I love it. And then you've got the lily color is like a soft, um, it's like a bone kind of color, maybe a little pinky in there. So, yep, in, in real life, it's got like a, pe a peach tint to it. We call it salmon luster, but it's a very pale, like wash, mm. like kind of color really over like a chalk. So yeah, there's a, it's a real uh, light kind of pinky color. So let's see what people are saying. We've got Brenda here saying the lily beads are so cute. I agree, Brenda. They really add such a sweetness to that design. We and love them so much. And those are listed separately on the website too, in case people so love lots them. of colors, I bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terry says, I love bracelets where I can fiddle with the beads when I'm wearing it. Oh, this is totally up your alley then. This is perfect. It's like a fidget bracelet. <laughs> 
For sure. And then Janelle is asking, what does the blue bonnet have that the other two don't? There is a price difference. I'm guessing it's probably the silver. It's a great question, Janelda. Um, the the silver, and actually, I meant to point that out when we were talking about the supplies. All three bracelets include the extreme soft flex. And so the bronze and the copper, I used the champagne color, but in the silver, that's got the sterling soft flex. Oh, okay, it. yeah. So it's got a little bit more expensive of the wire that you're yeah. using too. And you see it, so it's worth it, you know? Right, as opposed to covering it all up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty. Teresa loves the green. She's really pretty. And Lois says green is her favorite too. Got some See? green lovers here. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and uh, let's get started. Okay, Janelle just said that makes total sense to her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad the question came up though because I I don't always price my kits differently depending on the supplies in them. I, I usually just average it out, but with that one, it was a pretty significant difference. So yeah, that makes sense. When people get their kits, um, oh, it looks like my screen might be freezing up a little bit. So I'll, I'll let that cycle through here. But <laughs> when people receive their kits, they will get, um, Sorry about that, guys. If you can hear me, hopefully you can still hear me. Yeah, we can hear you okay. okay. And I, I think your hand cam looks fine too. So okay. Can... It was frozen on one of my screens. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uselessly moving things around. So um, when people get their kits in, the, in their order, they'll receive this packet with all of their supplies. And then they'll also get a little note and a coupon from us. So that's just a little extra thank you for jumping on board with the event this week. Uh, I'm going to actually like show you guys everything as it comes so that all my odds and ends that I'm using to do the sample today for the demo don't look so uh, unfamiliar. <laughs> and we cut one length of the wire so you get the 40 inches of the um, I believe 40 inches. I think I did enough so that you could do 10 inch sections of your soft flex wire because I know even if you have like, I mean, my bracelet, my wrist size is less than seven inches, but it's nice to have the extra on the ends. And then this allows for, I mean, up to like a nine plus inch bracelet. So you should have enough um, supplies to accommodate any wrist size desired and then, of course, you've got those little metal tubes and your extra large crimp beads. Um, this happens to be the copper kit, but I think it's worth mentioning that because the larger crimp tubes only come in, I think, silver and copper, you do get copper color in with your brass or bronze um, kits as well. But I'm big on mixing yeah. metal. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say we just do we do just have those two sizes. Okay. And those metals do kind of blend really well. I don't think you have to do much to worry about it. Um, but if you wanted to do anything, you could patina paint on top of them or you could um, add some wire wrap or anything like that. But I was going to say I've got some of the new. Well, I don't know. If that's oh, that perfect. The metallic, yes. So I was going to play around with that, too, at some point. So then you get a bead packet with, um, this is most of the check glass and then, well, actually I think this packet included all of your check glass. So you get two different colors of three millimeter fire polish. That's the smallest one in the baggie. And then there's four millimeter fire polish. That's that next size up that it's, they call them fire polish rounds. So to me, they're a little bit more of an oval shape, but um, that's the sizes and the shapes you're looking at there besides your um, pip and your lily beads. So again, you've got a little extra to play around with just depending on wrist size, et cetera. So, um, you know, make sure and pay attention to the placement in the video just so that you don't run out, but you could always add extra if you realize you've got some extra beads. And then of course those gorgeous Austrian crystals and some of the seed beads that we included in the bracelets for a little extra texture. 
So again, in your kit, that Softlex is a medium size and comes all in one length. So you do want to cut it into four equal sections, which should be about 10 inches each. And I've already pre-cut. I'm using um, a non-extreme color since I've already made all the extreme colors in the kits. This is the um, metallics in the antique brass color. And I'm going to mix the metals today. So you see I've got like a silver clasp there. I'm going to go all sorts of crazy with this. <laughs> And then these clasps are some of our favorites in the whole wide world. We do have these listed on our website as well separately. And this is a ball and socket clasp. Super awesome for um, bracelets. I find them really easy to use on my own. And they just pop in and out of each other. And as easy as they are to use, they are also very secure and are not going to just come apart on you. So those are like the two things, right, that you need to – Pay attention to when it comes to a bracelet class. You need security, but also ease of use. I've got my crimp beads. So every time I do this, I'm like, that's right. I need to order a bigger crimp tool from my dear friends, Sarah and Kristen, because I keep using the like smaller size crimp tool. So um, do as I say, not as I do. The um, most success would come from utilizing their, this is the three by three millimeter crimp bead with the appropriate size tool. But because I just keep forgetting about that, I'm going to be using that tool that's designed for like the two millimeter or um, somewhere in that range. So, yeah, so the bigger tool is called the Mighty Crimper, and it looks and acts just uh, the same way as the regular crimper that Cassandra is going to be using. It just has a larger um, little spaces in the tool to accommodate the larger size crimp. I saw somebody use it recently, and I was like, "Oh, well, that that makes a lot of, a lot more sense for the the crimp beads that we're utilizing today." So. If, if you want an extra pro tip, I am lining up my um, pieces of wire so that they're not all the same length because this hole in the clasp will accommodate all four pieces, but it's a little easier to get them through. Of course, I'm struggling just because I'm on camera, but <laughs> it's easier to get them through if you're not trying to cram them all in together at the same time. So. I don't know why that happens, but it's like Murphy's law. Whenever oh. you're on camera, something that's 100%. just a little bit, a little bit tough becomes like really tough when you're on oh, camera. Yeah. I mean, I walk around a classroom and thread like half a dozen needles in a matter of minutes normally. And then if I'm on camera trying to thread a needle, forget it. <laughs> so I've got all of those pieces of soft lips through the, um, class and just remember if you're at all conscious of the size of the bracelet and you want to make sure you have plenty of length you know just only fold over as as much as you need to get back through that crimp bead don't you know use too much of your wire in that spot because we're just going to trim it off anyways and you can pull on the longer wires too to help give you less waste there at the end as well we definitely gave you a little extra, but I just like people to not have to like ration their wire too much at the end. I think, you know, it makes more sense to do it at the beginning when you uh, have more to hold on to, right? So whether you're using the bigger small crimp tool, I like to face the um, larger curved portion, the single U shape upward. So upward being like the top of my clasp or bracelet. And then I know with this tool, sometimes it helps for me to kind of like give it a little extra pinch on the sides first to get the fold over to work a little better. But And then squeeze it so you've got your, your folded portion. So mine's probably just got a little extra crimp to it and a little more texture than if you've got your correct tool to use. But 
Haven't had any of those suckers fall apart yet, so. <laughs> All and that extra wire really helps it grab on there. So it still is very secure, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. And those, I mean, you guys use such good metal in your crimp beads, too. Um, you know, the sterling and the copper are so soft that that really helps to, like, secure your wire. And I would say don't be too um, nervous about leaving a little bit of you know, like you'll have a little bit of that wire folded over that's sticking out. And I've worn these bracelets over and over and not noticed any major issues with like, you know, if you've got a good pair of flush cutters or um, the nippers for the beading wire, you should not have to worry about any majorly sharp edges stabbing you. And I think that that big crimp kind of pushes everything, you know, there's so many strands of wire here, it kind of keeps it all gathered up there. So I'm seeing some orders pop up. Thank you so much, you guys. So I'm gonna show you the ends to kind of explain sizing. And with a bracelet like this, everyone's just gonna have to let go of their need for um, symmetry because it might not always happen. And what I mean is, you know, this bracelet and this bracelet, even though I started with different sections of beads, I ended up pretty much making the exact same size bracelet. The only way I could get the um, bracelet to size up was to go past my last noodle from the previous two bracelets and create an extra section of beads like that, which makes a very generous bracelet size. So. If you have some larger whole beads, you could even start with one over all your um, wires before you add that first tube. There's ways to like extend the length a little bit more, but less than like creating a whole nother section of the bracelet. But basically your only two options are either to end on, start on a noodle or a section of beads like that, unless you really modify it some. So. You'll just have to pay attention as you get closer to the end. I have a question from Marisol. She says, when I cut the wire close to the crimp, it feels sharp. Am I doing it wrong? Well, I think when you have this many wires, um, like Cassandra showed, she left a little extra um, tail on there. So it wasn't cut all the way to the crimp in this case because maybe it would be a little sharper. You have yeah, like I think a little bit. The crimp itself can almost be a little sharp if you are feeling the very edge of it. So that's, yeah, that's the the point of that conversation about leaving those pieces not, you know, right up to the crimp, but just a little bit further out. I mean, if you shove your finger at them like this, then they, they will feel, you'll feel the wire on the end of the, the beading cable. But um, when, when worn, I don't notice us you know, any kind of stabbing or anything, so. Yeah, and I have quite a few designs where I've got a lot of wires like that crimped with the Mighty Crimp, and then I cut pretty close. And when I actually have it on, I don't really feel it. So it could just be you're noticing it, holding it, but you might be okay when it's on you. Exactly. Or you can, you can go ahead and add a little, um, maybe a larger bead right at the start, so it's close to the crimp if you want to, or you can add a little wire wrapping around your crimp um, yeah, just to, to kind of cover, cover it. it up. So there's um, some options to play with. An end cap too, depending on how you placed it or a larger um, crimp cover. I don't know if there's a like four millimeter crimp cover size that would fit over the three millimeter crimp bead. We do have a four millimeter crimp. It's kind of snug over that, but you can make it work um, if you want to try give it a try. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm using the wrong color. <laughs> my tube, wanted to mix my metals here. So similar to our conversation about going through the clasp, um, you know, now my wires are still all a little off from each other in length, which is perfect because you can fit all four of these wires through the tubes and you do wanna start by going through your first tube with all of those wires. So I am going to do that. And that also, I guess, if you start and end with a tube, that also comes down and hits, 
you know, right near where you cut off your, um, the ends of your wires, that gives you a little bit of a buffer too. And then I do have some of these lily beads pre um, on a head pin. So you've got the head pins in your kit, but I will demo. Yeah, I figured that the, the hole on those ones was a little small, but I will demo. So again, when we were chatting about like going over things, your, um, your little tubes are there so that you can gather your wires, but then there's also space there to do some dangles. So the lily beads are going to dangle over that tube. And some of the head pins are a little shorter than others just because of supply availability. But I would say, I mean, this is a fairly skinny pair of round nose players, you're going to um, want to do like mid range on a size like this. And you can definitely, if you're not sure about the size of your players versus the size of the tube, you can create that first section of your wrap. And then before you finish off, slide it onto the tube to make sure it'll actually slide over. And this is another bead that's going to dangle depending on how big you make your loop down and kind of come over those um, wires on the end as well. So you can finish that off on or off the bracelet, but you're just going to take that piece of wire that remains. And this is just a basic gallery wrap. So we'll go over that a few times. I think I just broke my bead. I was being too uh, aggressive with it. <laughs> but this is the latte luster color that I have listed on the website. And I just love how um, it's got like a really soft kind of um, champagne color to it. So that was why I decided to go with that. It kind of feels like it has a pearly um, coating on there a little bit. It does have a very pearl-like color and finish to it, Kristen. That's a great point, especially since there's so much pearl jewelry everywhere right now. We're definitely obsessed this summer. So now you're going to want the rest of your um, beads. And I have just got, like, the crystals. We've got a few size uh, eight seed beads in those kits. And I'll show you exactly how I go about placing all of those. <laughs> Marisol, you and I are soul sisters. That is a definite um, reason for the, the name. I am a coffee addict. <laughs> so you have less of some three millimeter, three millimeter fire polish than you do of others in your kit. There's one that's more prevalent and one that's a little less prevalent, but you can just place them based on your um, desired color scheme and size of the bracelet. Let's see. I think I've almost gathered up all the beads there. I guess I should I should have gotten these out, Kristen, while we were chit-chatting, huh? <laughs> Oh, that's okay. It's hard to remember all of the things. <laughs> it, it is. We, and, and this bracelet's going to go so fast. Like this, this just like milks it for all it's worth. <laughs> right. It gives us a chance to see all the beads in their glory as you pull them out. Yes. That's uh, again, the tactile aspect of this, uh, this hobby is great. So I just really enjoyed the idea of mixing up these, uh, different metallic finishes here. So in each cluster section, we'll do, we'll call it that just for the sake of having something to call it. We have got a four millimeter, a three millimeter, a size A seed bead, a crystal, and a pip. So there's a lot going on there. And you can, you know, smush and pull apart these tubes a little bit to give those beads more room to breathe and to extend the size of the bracelet. So 
that's also an option for sizing. But the important part to note that is that you've got four pieces of wire and with your crystal and your size eight seed bead, you want to go over two of the pieces of wire with um, those two beads. So I'm going through, and of course all the other crystals I've used have like not given me any trouble, but this crystal apparently has a thicker coating on it and it's kind of squishing over the wire here. So I'm gonna pull out my chain nose pliers and make that thing behave. <laughs> And maybe this one just has a smaller hole by itself, but. And I just pulled my bead down and it's it's worth noting that as you place your, your beads, you might have to rearrange your wires or choose your wires that go over cer into certain beads based on the way that they come in and out of the tubes. So I just did a little rearranging so that there wasn't like a wire. Uh, it was all twisted up looking, I guess, is the best way to put it. Marisol <laughs> says that Crystal is being a diva. That <laughs> Crystal was being such a diva. It's like, oh, you want to use the fancy shiny Crystal? I'm going to give you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> this is another really pretty color palette you have going on here, too. Thank you. I was at the store looking to see if I had any more of that metallic finish in the crystal. And I've got one more place I can check, but I have a feeling this would not be able to be a kit because I don't think I have more of that particular crystal. So sad face. Cause that was my goal was to like maybe tempt people with a color palette that was irresistible. <laughs> so those two wires are going through those two beads. And then I am putting a three millimeter onto, is that right? Cause I feel like, yep. At least in some spots. It seems like my beads are gonna be crowded. I'm gonna skip the three millimeter for now and use the pip on one of these empty wires that's coming out of the tube. Um, Kristen, you know, I was using the extreme colors in my in my original samples and, you know, going through those crystals with two pieces. Do they have a different diameter at all than the um, other? You know, they don't have a different diameter, but it is a different core. So all okay. of the um, soft flex and the metallics lines are stainless steel core um, with a 49 strand microbraided technology and the nylon coating. And then the um, extreme is a copper core and it has a different um, woven pattern as well. It's like a one by 19 is what it's called. And so okay. they are manufactured differently. So they do behave slightly differently, even though the diameters are the same. I mean, it very well could just be the like position of the moon today and the crystal, but I thought, you know, there could be other reasons for that. So I should probably ask. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure about the nylon. Sometimes like nylon could be thicker or thinner. So that could be slightly different between the two wire lines and that could make a difference. Okay, awesome. Well, I've got beads on all of my strands here and I wanted to like splay them all out. So when you are getting ready to add your next tube and your next uh, lily bead, you are going to spread these cords out and you are going to take the two that are coming out of the crystal and the seed bead and split them up from everything else. So I'm going to pull one of those away and then the second cord from those two beads is going to cluster with the other two cords. So we're going to have three cords and then one of the cords from the crystal is going to come off to the side. And that set of three cords is what we are going to put through our next tube. And the magic of why that is will be forthcoming. So what that does is the rest of those beads are all clustered together and held in place by the tubes. And then you've got that set of beads with one cord coming out 
is going to be at least one of the places that you position a three millimeter fire polish. And I'm gonna do a brass out of my color scheme I've got here on the tray because that brass is gonna sit next to my silver tube. And I think that's gonna look really fun with the extra color um, from the additional metallic. And then I'm gonna try to not break this lily. Bead abuse, somebody should uh, arrest me. <laughs> and you can position your lily however you like. I always tend to like put the, the face of it, the top of the lily down, because I just really like that bell shape of the bead, but that's really kind of opposite of the way it would sit in you know, nature. So. That is a design artistic decision that you get to make for yourself. <laughs> and then the first bend I make when I'm doing that wrap with the head pin is a right angle bend with the tip of my pliers. I just use my round nose for that. And then again, on this size chain nose plier, I go up the middle like so and wrap that piece around to make this little like shepherd's hooks shape. And then you have to reposition the, the wire in your pliers to get a full loop. And I really prefer to hold my loop across like so when I'm finishing off my, my wrap. I'm purposely doing it off the piece this time so that I can try to be a little more gentle with that bead. But as long as you remember to add them um, in the right spot, you can you can do this free of the rest of your project. And then remember, you're gonna leave this third or this fourth piece of wire off to the side and you're gonna take these other three that are through your tube. And that is what you're going to put your lily onto. I love how you use these tubes. I really think it's such a fun design and to have that lily floating on top is just too, too cute. Thank you, Kristen. You know, I, I can't remember the first few iterations of this, but I really did want to see more of the wire because I mean, if we're featuring your guys' product, that to me is kind of the point is that we can see it a little bit more. You know, sometimes I just need to string some beads and that's that, but I really love the challenge of trying to come up with things that show it off more. So these tubes seem to really um, fit the bill. So now that I've got all my beads on too, I've got my three millimeter on that floating wire and I've got my lily on the tube. You're gonna take that floating piece of wire that's outside of the tube and you're gonna grab one more piece of wire from inside the tube. Those are what you need to put your crystal and your seed bead on because those are the beads are, that are gonna hold that in place. Any of the three pieces of wire from inside the tube is fine, but you need to make sure and grab the piece that's on the outside of the tube with it. So I've got the seed bead and then I'm putting on the Diva crystal. <laughs> yeah, that one particular crystal definitely was tighter than this one, so. Just the luck of the draw. <laughs> Sometimes that coating, I think, might get like inside the hole and thicken oh, it up occasionally sure. or something. And those metallic coatings in the seed beads too are uh, troublemakers. So, <laughs> <laughs> anybody have any questions or anything? No, I don't. Other? Not the moment. So, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and ask. We've got. Um, Debbie saying that she loves this design and uh, Marisol chiming in with a pip pip hooray. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Ann is also saying it is a lovely design. I agree. It really is super sweet and pretty. And I love how um, it's got a very pretty aspect, but there's also something kind of edgy about it too, you know? With those metal tubes, right? Yeah, yeah. It like brings a little, a little thing harder. Yeah. 
So again, once you've got that little cluster section with your pit and your fire polish and everything, I'm separating those two layers coming out of the crystal and just pulling one of them aside because the other three need to go through my tube. This is something that even after I made up the design and was working on it myself, I was um, at times having a hard time forgetting. You know, I kept forgetting to do that. So. <laughs> three, you would always do the four and be like, oh, got to pull it back out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, easy. That's a great, great thing to ask. Let me bring this up so that hopefully you can kind of see the the beginnings of it here. And the yeah, subtlety was... of these different bronzes and golds in here, I know is not even coming close to uh, really showing up on video. So it'll be fun to get this done and get a proper picture of it later for you guys. I'll make sure and post that in the VIB group. Thank you. Yeah, for those of you that aren't in there, we have a Softlex VIB Studio Facebook group and it's very active and we share lots of pictures in there after videos have, have gone live. Um, and you can also check it out on our blog. We'll always share pictures on our blog on Friday and in our emails on Saturday so that you can see what we've done this week. Um, Jackie is asking, do you sell the tubes separately and what other colors are there? So I do sell packages of the tubes, but I don't believe we have them listed on the website yet. So that was something that would have been really smart of me to do ahead of the, the project today. But I can do that later this week so that people can um, do some shopping. And if anybody's placed an order already and wants to include some tubes, I can also individually um, invoice them or send an order um, for those. So I can do that and combine orders is my point. You don't have to pay extra shipping. but. The copper, the brass, and the silver are the three um, colors that we have. So, really pretty. And those come in like a hundred piece bag. So, it's a, a really like plentiful quantity. But, um, you know, we've got a few other projects we've done with them, including a really cute macrame idea. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, it looks like we lost your hand cam. Oh, no, wait. Maybe we lost. We just lost our setting for some reason. That was oh, weird. Good. The back. <laughs> it's probably Here we go. Me. My, my internet. Although we spend a fortune on it, is spotty sometimes. Sometimes. So maybe it dropped and kind of came right back. And yeah, that's I think so. <laughs> Shelly says she's fallen a little too far behind, and we'll have to rewatch. Yeah, yeah. Just hang out with us and and see where uh, Cassandra goes with it, Shelly, and then you can um, watch the replay to finish up. From where well, and start. I can definitely slow my roll a little bit here too if people are having a hard time keeping up with the, um, if Shelly, if there's something specific you want me to show um, more closely, I've still got like another section or two I can do. So I'm just working on that next Lily right now. Marisol can see this in all kinds of fall colorways. Yeah. I can too. And it's a great um, stacking bracelet. I don't know if anybody else is like, that's criteria for your bracelet designs. But for me, it's like, I love to like stack a whole set of bracelets on my wrist. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of an it's, it's got a lot going on, but it's still fairly thin. So it's easy one to kind of throw in with a lot of other designs. And because you've got all of those um, pieces, even though the the wire is just the medium size, um, you really do have between the four pieces of wire and the tubes um, a very like oh um, bangle style look about it. But I love the fact that it has a clasp still because sometimes it's just really irritating to deal with like a bang a true bangle. <laughs> yeah getting it over your hand can sometimes be tough for me yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, me too. Same. So just in case anybody's still having trouble keeping up a little bit, we've got the, um, the little floating wire and I've grabbed out of the other three wires, I've grabbed one of those. So I've got two and two separated right now. And that set of two that includes the floating wire is the one but I'm putting the crystal and then a size eight seed bead over. 
So the crystal grabs the floating wire as well as one from the tube to kind yep. of- Yep, and then that is what keeps your um, lily bead on the Going tube. too far. Yeah, gotcha. from, from straying too far. <laughs> yeah. I love that this is kind of a good project too for a bit of a bead soup and stuff once you get going and get comfortable. Oh, um, yeah. Grabbing the kit would give you a great base to start it. And then you could take that and kind of play with some other things you might have. And well, I think and hint, hint, we have so many pips and three and four millimeter fire polish on our website. <laughs> you can There's make up all combos. the different colorways. Yes, the color combos are endless. Patty is saying Christmas colors would make great gifts. That's very oh, true. Definitely. And these um, lily beads, I'm trying to think there is at least one color that is an excellent, like I think an excellent holiday color. I'll have to see if I can uh, find the name of it and point that out to people later when I post the picture. It has, I have to mention it's been forever and a day since I, um, went and got a manicure and I thought if there was ever a time to have my nails look extra festive, it was the <laughs> customer appreciation week. So, you know, I will say I've been, I've been admiring your nails and the color and the shine of them the whole Aww. time. So it Thank was worth Kristen. it. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good, I am a sucker for all things coral. So this is like a little bit more of a rusty coral, but it was definitely, it had to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in all like corally colors today too. That was the vibe. I feel like it's such a pretty um, fall color. And then I've got it added with some deep reds and a rust. And it's like, it really kind of tones down the pinkiness. But then I love it in the summertime too, when you pop it up and make it like a brighter tone. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a very versatile color. And it's one of those things like coral and turquoise, I am pretty convinced you can wear with almost anything else and make it work. <laughs> that's a, that's my story anyways, and I'm sticking to it. One of the first um, mystery kits that I ever kind of really curated a lot on my own was um, our Shades of Coral kit, which was just that. It was like coral with teals and turquoise. <laughs> oh, nice. So pretty together. We are definitely uh, soul sisters as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. funny. It's fun to see where your color um, palettes like line with other people, you know? Yeah, I, I look at it. That and food, like taste and food, is um, two of the ways I judge people. <laughs> <laughs> What colors do you wear and uh, what what are you eating? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you enjoy to eat? <laughs> and judgment like in a like are we are we meant to to hang out or or not not necessarily like a mean kind of judgment. <laughs> a very soft judgment, not a, a hard judgment. judgment. <laughs> I realized the way I meant it didn't really sound the way it came out, so <laughs> Susie is asking, does the tulip go over the floating wire? Um, no, I think the tulip goes over the tube. Good good question. We're, we're just at that point. So the tube has three pieces of wire coming out of it. And you take those three pieces of wire and go through the loop you made for your lily. And then that will sit over the, the tube. And you it away from the floating wire. You let the floating wire. Yeah, the floating wire is separated from all that. And then that is what you string a three millimeter fire polish onto is just that singular floating wire. I mean, there are no rules, so. Right. Nancy is asking, can you please repeat what type of soft flex wire is being used in this project? So this is the one I'm using today during the demo, but I would say the 0.019 medium diameter um, in your kits is the extreme color and really anything out of their line of this size, I believe would work with 
the project now that we've tested the waters here. That's another good reason to do the demo in a different set of colors, right, Kristen? Yes, yeah. So anything that would be the medium diameter of any of the Softflex beading wire lines um, would be just fine, yeah. And I was just doing a little measuring. My samples all um, that fit me all have five tubes in them and your kit has six. So um, there's plenty of cushion there because the tubes are like, oh, what, they're 20 millimeters long, so. Janelle is asking, is your floating wire always the same wire? Um, oh, Janelle, if I was able to manage that, I would be a magician. I definitely do not try to grab the same piece of wire each time. It might happen by default, but it's not a requirement at all. Yeah, I think that would be tough to to follow that same wire all the way through. So you just leave, you're just basically taking three and one each time. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yep. the only time <laughs> it matters is when you're grabbing to like separate stuff from the, from the cluster. You do want to make sure you grab one of the two wires coming out of the crystal section. Yeah, you can even take a little bead stopper or something if you wanted to like put it on that floating wire so you make sure you oh, don't grab it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be extra OCD, right? Right. You're like, oh, little mini bead stopper on there. That's a great question, <laughs> though, because I can see people watching you do it could assume that and then be working on it themselves and go like, oh, my gosh, how am I ever going to keep track of this? So it was really like a super good question to ask because I think it's it's important for people to know that that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a requirement. Yeah, Janelle just says that was her thought. That would be really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm good, but I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got my last little uh, cluster section and I'm getting ready to add my last uh, part of my tube section, guys. Oh, so here we go. I almost did it wrong. <laughs> I went through and did all my little separating there. Once you know you're at the end of your bracelet, and again, that's going to be dependent on your wrist size and not necessarily what part of like what section you're in. So just remember that like if you've got one of these sections here, you can end on that section, but that crimp area is going to add a little bit of length. Um, just right. the same as like putting another tube on is going to add a whole lot of length. So just be prepared. If you are ending on a tube, you do not want this separated piece. Um, or at least, you know, I didn't do that at the beginning. So we're not going to mm -hmm. do that at the end. I right. do like some symmetry. And that's a good, I can see there's still quite a bit of um, beads left over too. So if you did need to make your bracelet a little bit longer for some reason, I think you can always probably add a, a couple extra beads maybe in the clusters to kind of make that a little wider there. Or yeah. you had shown with an extra cluster at the end after the tube. So those are some ways to, to just adjust your design a little bit if you need to. Yeah, I really like to make sure people have some sizing options because I know none of us are the same size and the whole point of life is that we're all different. So I don't want to like pigeonhole people into just one bracelet size. The The kids are definitely meant to be utilized for whatever is going to fit someone best. Oh, great point. And Becky says, I may use some of the extra beads to make earrings. Yeah, so I you could totally do that. Had the same thought, Becky, if you've got two extra lilies and some other things, that would be perfect. I can't wait to see what all the other presenters are making. The projects look so cool. Oh my gosh, there's so many good things. I know it's going to make my head spin by the end of the week, having all of this amazing inspiration from everyone. I think is that's there... the part that's really fun is seeing how everyone, you know, comes up with totally different ideas and approaches it in a different way. But we're all using very similar um, bases of your projects. <laughs> 
Definitely. And now, is there a second presentation today? Are there two each day? There's three each day. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh, speed I overload. Know. I know, I know we'll have a presentation. So today's started at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then we have another one that comes up at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And then at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So at 1 p.m. today, we'll have um, Rebecca Combs from Design and Adorn and she'll be sharing a Kumi Himo project with us. And then at 3 p.m., I'll be back on my own to open up Softlex Company's um, mystery kit and do a project with everyone. Oh, so. yay. Now, is Rebecca's that beautiful necklace that's like kind of a, not a lariat style, but like lace? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So cool. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, Rebecca is a really great designer. She does. Um, she was with us last year on the customer appreciation um, week, and she has a beautiful eye for color and pattern. And yeah, she put together a really fun project for us this week. So, looking That's forward to that. Very exciting! I can't wait to see that come together. So. Um, I've got my last lily over the tube, and that tube has all four, four pieces of wire in it. And then I'm putting all of those wires through my second crimp bead also, Oop, which, look at that, slides right over your tube if you are not um, paying attention to it. So <laughs> I am going to go through now your... Um, both ends of this clasp will accept all four pieces of wire, but this end is even larger than the other. So you should not have any trouble getting, which I think is a great point to make about these clasps for other designs. They, you could do multi-strand bracelets and do multiple strands off the same um, clasp without any trouble. I was also going to say that's also a really good point when you start to start with the smaller size because it's a little easier to get through it when you're um, really trying to get those wires in in the beginning versus leaving the smaller side to the end and then you're struggling when your bracelet's already put together. Yes, just like the idea of not giving yourself too much extra wire at the beginning and making it as short as possible when you're crimping. Um, that same idea definitely applies in this scenario too. And then, you know, of course, this is going to be the fun, the fun moment of getting all of those wires through your crimp bead. And I do try to keep them all on the same side of the crimp bead, the pieces I'm feeding back through, because I think it's a little easier to cluster them and get them through there. Yeah, it'll also lay a little bit nicer if you pay attention to how your wires are laying side by side as well. Yep, and I'm gonna turn this this way so you guys can see like with all those pieces of wire, there's gonna be some that kind of loop up too much and not enough. So also just kind of pay attention to that as you work. And then I am gonna peek at the ends on some of my other ones to see if I left a little bit of, oh, not too much space. So before you crimp that off, take a look at the whole design now that everything's in place. Make sure that you don't have any real wonky like wires that are too tight or too loose. I mean, you can even move it around a little bit because that's caught by your crimp bead for a minute just to make sure that everything lays, you know, in a comfortable looking way. This isn't just about like the comfort on your wrist, although we're concerned about that. You also want to make sure that your um, bracelet doesn't have any like kind of kinks or anything in it. And then I will, in the same fashion that I started on the other side, this is the top of the clasp. So I'm going to take the larger um, side of the loop on the top of my crimp bead and make sure I've got that as centered as I can with the uh, state of the sizing difference here and just give it. And again, like you see me grabbing the edges of that, it's more because I'm using the wrong size uh, crimping tool and not necessarily because that's how it's meant to be done. But gives it a really nice, flat, secure finish. And then 
you know, I normally would like get right in here and like chop off my wires, but I'm going to take them individually and I don't want to leave them any longer than like where my tube, where this tube is. I don't want to leave them like sticking out past that, but I don't want to like cut them right against that crimp bead because I really think that that's going to create more sharpness. And then I even find myself like, you know, normally I would pull them way back like that. I think that'll cause them to stick out further as well. But if you guys run into any major issues with like sharpness there and come up with any fun ideas of how you deal with that, if the, the cuts don't get placed quite, quite the way you want them to, I'd love to hear about that in the, um, the VIB group. Ta-da! Oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you, Kristen. I'm really excited about the way these colors came together. They, I love a mixed metal design. That is like right up my alley um, and super fun for any time of the year. And then you can mix them on your bracelet stack with other things for each season. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I even had, I even had my brass colored clasp sitting here because I was like, almost tempted to do that. I think I'm happy with the the silver through that part though. That was the right choice. <laughs> it looks so good. I was trying to see here if I had a bracelet close by that I could share, um, but I'm not sure if I do. It's like um, a mixed metal color scheme. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, I guess this one would be okay to share. So <laughs> <laughs> just for, en for ending your bracelet, you were saying if anyone has any ideas. Um, oh, other... oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so let me put it on, where do I want to do here? Let me put my demo back in and show this real fast. So this is probably not my best example, but this is the one that I have next to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do something where you do a double crimp so oh. you can you can crimp off the larger all of the um all of the wires coming into that larger crimp and then you can even add a bead if you wanted to um or you can just add a second crimp and what i would do here is crimp the first one that large mighty crimp trim all of the wires except for one and then do a regular crimp like you normally would. So it's just the one connecting to your clasp. So, um, and that would probably help with some of those uh, wires sticking out. And then you can even put a little bead in between the double crimp. So that could maybe even help even further. Um, so yeah, so that was my idea. I probably have a better example somewhere, but it's just not right next to me. <laughs> Well, and I will, um, I've got tons of your guys' craft wire, so I will um, do a little wrap maybe around this particular sample since it's the newest one and just um, make sure and share that like idea in the group so that people have, you know, a, a, an option if they are running into trouble with that. Yeah, that's a great idea. So uh, I love seeing all four colors together. Look at how pretty they all are. I want all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it's so interesting once you get that brass um, colored soft flex into the silver on this one, it's like those two coordinate so well where, you know, otherwise the silver tubes would look really funky next to the brass colored tubes. So Mm -hmm. They really, yeah, they Definitely. really work well. Becky says, this is so pretty. Terry loves it and says, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Terry and everyone. Maria says, beautiful. And Marianne definitely could see these stacked together with coordinating colors. Oh, lots of love for this project. I think it's really, mm -hmm. really sweet. 
Yay. So a couple of other things before we uh, hop off here um, that I want to talk about is, well, first, let me just share the schedule real fast of what's coming up for today before I forget. <laughs> and <laughs> so here's our full schedule for the week. Um, we've got Design and Adorn at 1 p.m. Pacific time with Rebecca Combs. And then I'm back here again at 3 p.m. Pacific time with Softlex Company. And then tomorrow we do the same thing all over again with three videos at 11, 1 and 3 p.m. Pacific time. So here's the full schedule. Um, we'll have an after party at the end of the week where we're inviting all the presenters that are available if they want to come back and have a little after party with us at 3 p.m. You're welcome to come back and join us for that. Um, these are all of the presenters we have coming up this week. So lots and lots of amazing designers and and we have a swag bag that I have to just talk about for a second. <laughs> so I didn't say this yet, but we have this adorable swag bag that we created. It um, has this design, Creating Joy One Beat at a Time, that those of you in our VIB studio group helped us choose. We had a vote about a month, uh, maybe a month and a half ago. And this was the winning design. It's an adorable bag that is reusable. It changes from a little ball that you can put or a bead. I mean, it kind of looks like a bead, right? <laughs> that, you can, <laughs> that you can throw in your um, purse or in your car and just have with you. And then you can open it up at any time. You will also be getting mystery treats from presenters for the Create a uh, Customer Appreciation Week this week inside. So we're not going to tell you what's going to be in there, but there will be some mystery treats. There will be some items, some coupons, some things like that from the presenters inside the swag bag. You can find this at softlexcompany.com. It just went live this morning before we jumped on our video. And I have one right here to, to share with you. So let's take a look at our little swag bag. This is, I don't have any of the goodies. I don't have any of the mystery treats, but I have the bag to show you um, what it looks like. So this is it just folded up and how you can kind of throw it in your, in your purse or in your car. And then you just un, unravel it and you've got this great little bag and it's super lightweight it's very um creating joy one bead at a time it's like water resistant it's kind of like that a windbreaker ish kind of material it's really cool and so so cute as you see we have our little creating joy one bead at a time joyful beading hashtag underneath me as well um on the video here because we want to see what you guys make this week. So if you've got Cassandra's kit and you make your Lily wreath bracelet, please share it and share it on your social media sites, tag, um, tag us and use that hashtag joyful beating so that we can see it. Um, and a little bit extra about this bag. It is made here in the U S it's actually made in the, uh, it's designed in Berkeley, California. It is a woman owned business and um, they create ethically produced bags to help us with the environment. So we love so much about this. We hope you guys do too. And you grab your swag bag, have your little recycle bag you can use all year long and get all of your fun mystery treats from everyone inside. Oh, good. I'm glad everyone's saying they love it. Oh, it's so compact. It's really a cool bag. I know. I love it. It's so cute. It is. And it's so perfect. Like that teal is such like a happy color oh. and you'll be able to like, spot it easily. I think that's an issue for me. My reusable bags. I'm like walking around in my car, digging through stuff, trying to find my bags when I'm at the store. <laughs> And it's got this little cute little pocket. You just roll it back in. You're, it's supposed to be like your, you know how you, when you fold socks and you just roll your sock after you fold it? It's like that idea. So you just and roll I, it. 
if I hadn't just watched you do it, I would not have believed it was that easy. I'd be like, yeah, mine will never be that size again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally did it. I know I did it before we went live because I go, well, I got to see how it how it rolls back up again after I unravel it. And it was super quick and easy. Really That's cute. impressive. I, I think I told you when you and Sarah shared those bags, uh, I got to see a sneak peek when I was doing my last um, video with you guys. I said, oh, I've got some of those, but they're specifically for wine bottles. Right, you did say that. I don't know. I, I don't have a wine bottle one yet, but maybe that's in my future. <laughs> so before we go, do you have anything else you wanna share with us, Cassandra, that you've got going on? You know, we just got a fun new product and I have to say that Sarah is a terrible influence and sent me an email from Vintage and was like, oh my gosh, look at this cool thing that I think you should use. So and you were I, like, it's perfect. <laughs> I don't have any like finished examples sitting here because um, I, I, you let me know when we're running out of time. I don't want to take us over. But... You've got about, yeah, we've got about 10 more minutes okay. or nine oh. more minutes. So we've got time. Yeah. Okay. So we had a, a big, big festival in our downtown area this week. It's um, a mural festival with over 30 artists and murals going up over four days. They fly people in from all over the world. The two artists that were painting our building were from, um, France and England. And it's just like, there was so much going on. There was so much buzz and excitement that it definitely inspired um, some things. So the, the pieces that I made, I've posted pictures of some of them, but the pair of earrings that I made that was inspired by our one artist, she loved them so much that she bought two sets from me and commissioned me to make her another pair. So I didn't have enough time this weekend to make two totally new pairs of earrings. So I like switched out the ear wires on the one that I had started with and gave her that set and then made a new set in time for her. But um, I'm, I'm totally prattling on about this because um, this is the, the stuff that the items that Sarah shared with me from Vintage. So mm -hmm. they've got their line of like pop outs that they've been doing for forever. Um, or at least it seems like a while now. And they've added a whole new line with, I, I keep saying that they're aerated <laughs> with all the little holes. Little holes. And <laughs> it's perfect for beads. So like this one is um, an unfinished example of what I did for the earring that was inspired by our mural artist. And, and I did there see was that earring print. posted, I think, on your in, your Instagram page. Yeah, so, yeah. I've got it on our to see Instagram. the full earring, it's yep. gorgeous. It's like the, the fringe is like that long with like metallic seed beads. So it's extra fancy, but I have a picture posted with it in front of the wall so people can see like how much it coordinates. Uh-oh, Sarah's ears Sarah, are burning. I see, she just joined us, right? I was like, oh, she must've known we were talking about her that she Sarah, sent you this I'm <laughs> blaming you for all my shopping. <laughs> so she thought of you right away. <laughs> but the the designs, and then they've got all those stains that they make now. So this has like the stains on it, which makes it look really like kind of vintage and soft. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, really we're going to be pitching seed beads onto those. I've been playing around with like, the macrame techniques that they showed. And they have a couple of videos already sharing like how to utilize some of them. But um, I've got a virtual and in-person workshop that I'm planning on offering in October that's already on our website. If somebody saw these and was like, gosh, I wouldn't even know where to start. I'm going to go over like doing some of the stains, some painting techniques that, um, you know, are not necessarily just the kind of thing that Vintage has been um, sharing with people, but some other ideas of ways you could utilize it. And then um, obviously stitching seed beads and other beads into it. So really um, cool. Oh, look at that. This is that such a for... great little um, <laughs> marriage with your seed bead curated box collections too. So yeah. uh, this, you guys are piece, on. <laughs> the color scheme might be specifically for one of the upcoming collection colors, so. Oh, very nice little uh, sneak peek. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. Such, um, so much, so much opportunity to play with those for sure. Lots of stuff. Definitely. 
Oh, I love that you're going to be doing a virtual class to really help everybody out with that too. Yeah, I wanted, I, I'm going to offer an in-person one. I've had a handful of people already, already register for that, but I've been doing the virtual ones for long enough that I think even though it's got a lot of like aspects and components to it, we can make sure people have an exciting experience, even though it's virtual. Yeah. Aw, thanks, Brenda. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, they really are great bracelets. Arlene says too, love the bracelets. Thank you. Oh, so much fun. Well, thank you for being here with us, Cassandra, for kicking off our Customer Appreciation Week. It was so lovely to spend time with you. And everyone go check her out at BeadsToLiveBy.com. If you um, want to grab some of her kits, she's still got some available in each of the colorways. The silver one is going quickly. So if you really love the silver, you'll want to get that as quick as possible and um check out the swag bag over at softlexcompany.com i'm going to be back at 3 p.m pacific time today and i'll be opening up our customer appreciation week i'll be doing the unboxing for it and then we're going to do a design um, from here i'll have to do my first one on the fly because i have not opened it up and played with it yet so we'll do an on the fly design and then i'll probably do a design that i like think about a little bit more later this week um, and we've got uh rebecca coming on at 1 p.m pacific time and she'll be here with sarah ayler she'll be sarah will be hosting uh that video so thanks everyone for joining us for our first video of the week we cannot wait to just see so much of you and <laughs> i know and i think i speak on behalf of every other presenter when i say that Kristen and sarah are such treasures and i really appreciate all of the work you're going to be doing this week because i know doing three videos a day <laughs> all week is a lot and you guys are kicking butt so thank you for being here with us make sure and have your like fruit lozenges on hand and all that. Yep. I know I've got my I've got my Ricola right See? next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got my water. I'm getting myself all set up. Yeah, I was thinking today. I was like, it's either going to be. I mean, on one hand, I'm going to be taking a break from all of the stuff I do most of the time during the day because I'll be live on video so much. So it'll be a little break from my everyday stuff, but I'll also be on, and it'll be a lot. So it'll be a, it'll be a, a really fun week. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody, getting to chat with everyone and seeing all of you at home. And I know that um, it will be a lot. So if you, you know, can't beat along with every single video, that's okay. They're all here for the replay after. You can watch them anytime. You can come back later and see which kits you want and then come back later and watch them on your own leisure um, to uh, to really get the tutorial down. Uh, Terry says, we love Kristen and Sarah so much. Yeah, we love you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. It's definitely been um, a really nice aspect uh throughout it you know the last couple of years to be able to show up and be here with everyone live so much more often i mean up until now i've worked 20 years for softlex and most of that is just me on my own in the background at my desk and it's like the last couple of years it's just exploded with how many wonderful people i get to meet like you cassandra now you're <laughs> an influencer personality of the great interwebs Right? My kids look at me and roll their eyes. They're like, uh-huh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. I have my teens to put me in check if my head just starts floating away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to end here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We Thank will see you. you again in a half hour. Go get a drink, take a little bathroom break, and we'll be back with some more beating goodness really shortly. Lots of love. Bye, guys. Thank you so Bye. much.